I'm Alex, the host of The Great Outdoors. Inside of this capsule, I have a beautiful metallic blue wasp known as the Blue Mud Diver. Now this wasp has a very special life. It is a spider hunting wasp. It is the most stunning looking wasp I've probably ever captured. It is known as the Chalybeon californicum. It's a beautiful metallic blue species of wasp. It lives a predatory lifestyle of actually feeding on one of the most feared insects in North America. The black widow. This, my friends, is the infamous black widow. It is a specialized hunter. It is a solitary wasp, so it is a spider wasp like other mud divers. Now, I've never seen the sting of Chalybeon californicum ever done before. It is probably the most stunning and brilliant looking wasp I've ever captured. I will say it is pretty large, uh, around the same size as most of the other Palestis that I've caught here recently. If now, I will get stung by this wasp today, and we will find out just how painful the sting of Chalybeon californicum actually is. The Blue Mud Dauber, Chalybeon californicum, is a metallic blue species of mud dauber wasp that is the primary predator of black widow spiders. Females build their own nests, but occasionally refurbish nests abandoned by other mud dauber wasps, particularly Cephalaron. It is not normally aggressive. It is similar in shape and color to the steel blue cricket hunter. Like other types of wasps, males do not have an ovipositor, therefore they cannot sting. And this literally is all the information that is published on the Blue Mud Dauber, Chalybeon californicum. I guess it really goes to show why we really need to learn more about these species. This is the Chalybeon californicum, the metallic blue spider wasp. And I will induce a sting, and let's just see how painful this very large spider wasp actually is. I don't have a great placement on her, so let's just go ahead and get stung by this wasp so we can see the prolonged effects. I'm going to get stung right here on my forearm. One, two, three. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a sting there. Okay, I just received two stings. Okay, it wasn't too bad though. Um, at least I know I've received a sting. I'm going to put in the capsule real quick and talk about this sting. Alright, so the sting site was right here. Um, no serious swelling or anything yet. Don't see one of those real signature red marks that you see with a lot of the Palestis. But I'm waiting to see what the actual effects are. And I can start to feel some tingling now. It's actually building still. Um, like I said, it's not severe by any means. Um, but certainly noticeable and if you were to stumble across this wasp you would notice being stung by it Now it is a solitary wasp, but they would do everything in their power to avoid human contact and human interaction So let's give this a minute and see what the prolonged effects of the metallic blue mud dauber wasp actually are What a beautiful species All right, I'll circle that sting site here in just a minute This is the swelling at about one minute in. Definitely noticeable, but not too bad. And it certainly doesn't hurt that bad, but I think I received at least two stings so far. So we'll give this another minute. The pain is not as severe as Palestis, probably any of the Palestis I've received so far, except for maybe some of the smallest Palestis. But definitely noticeable. It certainly left a whelp on me. This is about three minutes in, and I will note the really irregular swelling area. Now, I think that's because I received so many stings. I probably received, I thought two, but it was probably more like ten stings. And I can't find a pen. The one time I need a pen, you never find it. So, oh well. Pretty significant swelling area for sure. Look at that swelling. God damn. It's time to release this wasp species in the exact place where I found it hanging on this rope because it was probably hunting black widows inside of my storage shed. I'm going to go ahead and let her go and she can be on her way. There she goes. Right where I found her. Right back on the very road that I found her. There she is. What a beautiful species. I 
That's awesome. Gosh, focusing. Without a doubt, this is absolutely the most gorgeous wasp species I've ever seen. A metallic blue black widow hunting spider wasp right here. The Chalabion californicus. I've never seen a black widow in such a vulnerable position. However, it's probably the best position she could find in this large field of grass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her in this capsule I have right here in my pocket. And we're gonna get a better look at her. Let's go ahead and we're do that We're gonna do it now. quick because I don't wanna get bit by this one. This one, oh, she went down quick. Okay, she's down towards the bottom of that grass. All right, let's uh, Let's see if we can find her. The black widow is a venomous species of spider in the genus Latrodectus. Similar spider species include the brown widow and the Australian redback. There she is, she's coming out. Okay, she's moving. All right, let's grab her up. Females are well known for their distinctive black and red coloring, often resembling an hourglass, and for the fact that they will occasionally eat their mate after reproduction. The Southern Black Widow is native to North America, while the Brown Widow is native to South Africa or South America, they're really not sure. However, both have intersecting ranges. While the Southern Black Widow is venomous, the venom is seldom fatal to healthy humans. Okay, now I must admit, while I've seen those obvious markings before the hourglass, I can't say that I've ever noticed additional markings on a black widow. The southern black widow actually has three red dots on the top of its abdomen, with one of them being lined in white. Really stunning looking. There's a reason I would have never noticed this, because black widows typically hang upside down in their webs, and live in pretty tight quarters. This, my friends, is the infamous black widow. What a beautiful species. Certainly has struck fear into the hearts of many, many men. But I think naturally they just want to leave us alone, go about their day, hunt, and reproduce like any other animal. Speaking of hunting, something actually started going after this black widow inside of this observation cube. I have my suspicions as to what this might be, but that's for another video. People playing with our emotions have created an unnecessary fear of these arachnids. They are actually quite valuable to our ecosystem. This insect did not stop chasing after this black widow. It actually perched on my hair for a second, trying to get a good angle on it. However, this black widow was completely protected inside of this observation cube. I'm not one to interfere with the course of nature, but it wouldn't be natural for this black widow to become prey to another insect not while in my observation cube. I will show why it is not necessary to be scared of these insects. They typically just want to escape us. I wanted to do one stunt, let it crawl across my hand to prove to y'all just how harmless they actually are if they're just left alone. It just wants to go back to its burrow and reproduce. And that's all you need to see. Crawl right across. 